let us solve the objective questions before you go to the exam hall question 1 to 10 in this video if the set n is a subset of set m then so we're given two sets let's say set n has element A, B. Then we have set M also have element A, B, C, A, B, C. Now you can see that the set N is a subset of set M. Now let's see whether any of these will, be, will hold true. Set M and N have the same number of elements. It's not true. Because A is having two elements and this is having three elements. Some members of set N can be found in set M. Some members of set N can be found in set M. Alright, A and B are in set N and some of them are found here. But it is not just some. If you say some of them are found here, it means there is an element in set N that is not here. Let's say we have set, set let's say we have Q here. Uh -huh. that is the meaning of that statement but when that happens then this is not a subset of M so it means this one is not true no member of set N is in set M that one is not true because we can see A, B in N and they are in M all members of set N are in set M that's true because a, B are all found in set M. So if N is a subset of M, then the correct answer is that all members of set N are in set M. The Venn diagram shows the number of people who offer mathematics and all English in a class. Use this information to answer questions 2 and 3. How many people offer mathematics? So, the people who offer mathematics are all the region here. The circle, the full circle for M are the people who offer mathematics. So, those who offer mathematics will be 18 plus 7. And that will be equal to 25. All these people offer mathematics. Because if you offer both mathematics and English, it means still you are offering mathematics. So the correct answer is C. Then we have how many people offer only one subject? Only one subject. So mathematics only is this region. English only is this region. So only one subject will be mathematics only plus English only. That will be 18 plus 3. And 18 plus 3, that will, that will give you 21. So the correct answer is D. Simplify. 12 minus 7 minus into negative 5. So 12 minus 7. So let's deal with this one first, the bracket first. You know, we will get 12 minus 7. Now negative, negative becomes positive. Now the next thing we have to do is addition, subtraction. So we can decide to add first or subtract. So let's subtract 
12 minus 7 will give you 10. Will that be 10? 12 minus 7 will give you 5. Then plus 5. And that will give you 10. So the correct answer is 10. You can also decide to add negative 7 and 5 first. You get negative 2. Then add it to 12. So you get 12 minus 2 which will also be equal to 10. Question 5. Express 72 as a product of its prime factors. So let's use the factor 3. So 72, we know 2 can go into 72 and that will be 36 times so we use the prime numbers the next prime number is 3 but we can we have to check and see whether 2 is exhausted so can 2 still go into 36 yes how many times it will go 18 times can 2 go into 18 yes so 2 can go how many times nine times can two go into nine no so the next prime number is three can three go into nine yes how many times three times so three is prime so all these are the prime factors so to express them as prime, prime as product of prime factors we write them as 72 72 is equal to 2 2 times 2 times 2 2 times 2 times 2 then we have 3 times 3 3 times 3 So it means that 72 is equal to 2 exponent 3 times 3 exponent 2. So the correct answer is D. Find the smallest number which is divisible by 16 and 20. So we can still use the factor 3 to factor 16 and we'll get 16 is equal to 2 exponent 4. Then we can also use the factor 3 to factor 20 to get 2 exponent 2 times 5 to find the LCM we pick the common factors and look at the highest of the of the of the highest degree we look at the highest power so the for the 2 we have 2 squared and 2 exponent 4 the highest power is 2 exponent 4 so LCM LCM is the same as the least or the smallest number which is divisible by 16 and 20. So LCM of 16, 16 and 20 will be equal to LCM of 16 and 20 will be equal to the we take the highest powers of the common factors and multiply them. So for two the highest is is 2 exponent 4. For 5, the highest is 5 exponent 1. So 5 exponent 1. Note that there is 5 here, but it's exponent 0, which is 1. That's why we are picking the highest one, which is 5 exponent 1. And that will give you 16, 16 times 5. So 16 times 5 is the same as 80. So the correct answer is option B.
and let's look at this one number seven convert 243 base 5 to a base 10 numeral so 243 base 5 to base 10 numeral if you want to convert a number basis to base 10 we multiply each of the digits by the base so 243 base 5 will be equal to 2 times 5 then plus 2 uh, plus 4 times 5 so 4 times 5 then plus the last one which is 3 times 5 Then from the unit digit, this is the unit digit. So to get the unit digit, you we get zero. Then the next one, one. The next one, two. Now let's simplify this. This will be two times twenty-five. Then this will be four times five. We got five exponents. One is five, and this will be three times one. Because any non-zero number raised to the power zero is equal to one. So two times twenty-five will be fifty. Then four times five will be twenty. Then plus three times one is three. So let's add them. 50 plus 20 will be 70. 17 plus 3 is 73. So 2, 4, 3, base 5. 2, 4, 3, base 5 is equal to 2, 4, 3, base 5 is equal to 73, base 10. So that will be option D. A pineapple which has bought which was bought for one CD was sold at one CD 30 pesos. Calculate the profit percent. So profit percent will be profit 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 over original price profit over the cost price profit over cost price times 100 percent profit of our cost price times 100 percent so what is the what is the profit in this case so you sold it for one cd 30 pesos so profit is selling price which is one cd 30 pesos minus cost price which is one cd Then all over cost price, which is one CD. So this will be equal to 30 pesos, 30 pesos, which is 0 0.3, 0 0.3 over 1. So it is the same as 0 0.3 times 100 percent. Times hundred percent. So this one is supposed to be times hundred percent. So, you multiply 0 0.3 by 30, 100, you get 30. So, this will be 30%. 30%. So, the correct answer is option D. Now, let's look at 
question 9. We are simplifying 35 times x exponent 5 y cubed divided by 7 x y squared. So we can rewrite this as 35, 35 times x exponent 5 times y cubed. all over 7 times x times y squared so the x is the same as x exponent 1 now let's divide when we want to divide this first let's divide the constant 35 divided by 7 you know this will go here 5 times so we are going to get 5. Now, if you divide x exponent 5 by x exponent 1, you get x exponent 5 minus 1. When you are losing the loss of indices, when they are dividing, you subtract the exponent. So they are the same base. So you get y exponent 3 minus 1. So, this will give us 5x exponent 4, 5x exponent 4, then y exponent 1. But I know y exponent 1 is the same as y. So, the correct answer is A. Two bells, P and Q ring at intervals of three hours and four hours respectively after how many hours will the two bells first ring simultaneously at the same time so the first bell p rings as intervals three so when it rings at three then the next ring will be six the next ring will be nine the next ring will be at 12 hours the next ring will be at 15 hours and so on and so forth then the the second bell q will ring at four hours and the next one will be at eight hours and the next one will be at 12 hours the next one will be at 16 hours and so on and so forth now the question is asking us that how many how, after how many hours will the two bells first ring simultaneously so you can see that when they, for them to ring simultaneously then you have to find the common factors common factors and that will be equal to 12 hours so the first time you ring simultaneously will be after 12 hours so in other words just find the LCM of 3 and 4 and that will be 12 so I'm going to upload the, the continuation very soon mm, if you want to be informed when I upload anything concerning BEC the continuation make sure that you subscribe to this channel and please share this with your friends share with your friends then comment if you don't understand something then also click the like button if you see this video to be helpful to you thanks for watching and do not forget to subscribe now if you can still see this red in here it means you have not yet subscribed so you just have to click it so that the next upload you see it is still red you have to click it so that if i upload the next video you'll be informed click the bell icon too so that you get a notification whenever i upload a new video thanks for watching don't forget to subscribe